Hello ladies and gents and welcome to a tutorial where I look at the Cakewalk TTS-1 in a little bit more detail. So in a previous tutorial I showed how to set up a multi-track project using a multi timbral single instance of the Cakewalk TTS-1.1 multi timbral virtual instrument. That's a mouthful. Really useful if you're running on a computer with low CPU, like the one I'm currently using, that I have on loan, because you're able to use that one instance and get lots of different sounds out of it. So if you want to work out how to set that up, go back and look at my previous tutorial on that. What I'm going to do today is look at some of the settings you've got available to you within the TTS-1, so you can get a feel for what you can do to the sounds. So the TTS-1 is a very powerful it's like a sample player really it's got lots of built-in sounds already a, a, a huge array just look through the presets and it's really good i'm using today one of these it's a uh, innovation launch key mini it's uh, really bad for fat fingers but really useful for traveling around with i'm going to show how that comes into play in a bit so in front of me um, a little eight bar loop that i set up and uh, contrary to popular belief you can actually use more than four tracks in the TCS one, just add some more. I noticed that when you're duplicating tracks, it actually adds a new instance of the uh, TCS one. So you see down here in the inspector, if I drop down here, I've got one, two, and three now, because I've actually duplicated a couple of tracks. I could go into my synth rack and delete those. They're not causing me any problems, but uh, if you want to maintain the multi tabular aspect, always go back and select the first instance and change your instruments within the TTS-1. So what I've got at the moment is set up in this first instance of the TTS-1 is uh, I've got a 60s electric piano. Great, I've got some strings, 60 strings to go with it. I've got uh, a beefy FM bass. And what I've done here is because I want to get some separation in some of my drum sounds, I've got um, three instances of the standard uh, drum set got lots of choices you want to change them just click somewhere in the channel go to preset and you've got loads of different sets to choose from drum sets orchestral sounds synth sounds all sorts of things you'll hear this loop enough say bars so i'm not going to like bore you with it right away uh, but what i'm looking at today is some of the deeper settings within this tts1 because when you use a multi timbre mode you're rather limited what you can do in the console I found out that uh, so far I've not managed to split the instruments onto different tracks. Uh, to prove my point, let's have a little look at the console. So, if I play my loop, you see it's all coming out of one channel. All right, so it doesn't give me any, if I put a, an effect here on the piano, it's gonna affect all the instruments. I'm yet to discover a way of separating those out, so I'll be working on that. So what I'm going to do instead is play within the instrument itself to do a bit of a mix and fiddle around with some of the effects and some of the settings. To open the actual instrument itself, you click in, just go to one of the tracks. I've got the piano selected at the moment, which is my track two, and click on the little mini keyboard sign. That opens the instrument. And what you'll see here is what looks like a mixing desk and some controls. So each one of these channels allows you to mix your level. So using the one instance, the TTS-1, I've got the piano loud on the strings. And I've got the drums here, varying levels here, because I've got the actually congas, uh, kick drum and rim shot on three different channels here. So you can watch as I play, watch the levels on here. So I'll take the strings down even further, I can do. I've been high in the mix, whatever I want, okay. You've also got panning. So I can move my piano all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Hard panning sounds a bit odd in recording, but with some sensible panning, you can get um, quite a realistic kind of stage experience. So you're not having everything come from the same direction. Imagine watching a concert and all the, the whole band is sitting on top of each other in the middle of the stage. Well, that'd be what you'd get, that mono kind of sound. Um, even then you have the PA left and right, so you wouldn't get it then. But um, yeah, to get the idea of the instrument spread out, get that symphonic sound, use a bit of panning, a rule of thumb, avoid 
panning on things like kick drums, bass guitar sounds, bottom end instruments. Uh, it just sounds wrong. You need your bass coming from the centre. Um, I don't know if they've ever noticed, but when you've got a surround sound system in your room, uh, watching videos or something, you only have one bass speaking. You can position it anywhere and you can hear the bass from anywhere. So if you start trying to pan that around, you can end up with some phasing issues. So keep your bass instruments dead centre. Uh, that's why I put the kick on a separate channel. So going deep in some of the settings, um, it's got an edit button on top of each channel. I'm going to pick the strings because uh, they're going to be quite fun to play with. It opens up this window and uh, it's got a number of parameters in it that you can fiddle with. The sort of things you quite often get on a synthesizer. Now, before I do anything, um, obviously you can use your mouse and um, you can move these manually. I've got a trackpad, it's rather irritating, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, this row of buttons here on my launch key and uh, to make this work you've got to kind of look up your manual and work out what is what because each of these is uh, sends a signal via what's called a control channel and there's 127 control channels per MIDI channel so we've already talked about 16 MIDI channels we've got 16 parts to this instrument here but each one of those channels has got 127 control channels that you can assign to find out what your control channel is, I've already messed around with these, but um, when I first looked at these, so for instance, look at this filter cut off here. If I right click on it, you get this window pops up control change assign. It came up 71 or something, or 77. I've changed it to 21 because I looked at my manual and this is 21 through to 28. This control. So now that I've set 21, that control there, and as you can see, as I'm turning it, you can see underneath there, it's turning the cut off. And uh, so I've gone through, um, 22 is doing the uh, resonance there, um, 20, ooh, I haven't assigned 23, 24 is doing the attack on the envelope, decay, um, release, I'm going to go through and change some of those actually because I'm missing a few, so I'm going to change that to 23, you apply it to all parts, it should then spread across all the instruments. Um, this one's a 24. Apply to all parts. Uh, obviously, it will only affect this instance of the TTS one. So, if you've got instance two and three, you have to go and set them up again. Uh, what is that? 23, 24, 25. That's what I had there, right? So, now if I start twiddling, you're going to see all sorts moving. Okay, so that can be really, really handy. That last one hasn't taken hold for some reason. Mm. Nope, it's not having it, that one. It's because it's 28. Ah. Right, 28. There, hurrah. Let's solo these strings. These are the settings you've got. Your filter is essentially, in this case, it's a low pass filter and as you move to the left it cuts off some of the high frequencies you use a lot in dance music to get that kind of breakdown and build up sound uh sounds a bit like this so the resonance my movie camera stopped there for a minute let's try again the resonance is basically where it puts this uh, parametric boost at the point that the cutoff is made and you get that kind of um, wow wow sound. So you wonder how they make techno? That's how it's done. So the envelope is the shape of the, the way the sound is played. Uh, so like a piano sound has got um, a very instant attack. It's like percussive, so bang! Whereas a string has like got the gentle, that's called the attack. So if you slow the attack down, you get that gentle start. If you have the attack really quick, it snaps in. Uh, your decay is how quick the note goes down in level after you press the key. And the release is how quickly the uh, tone goes down a level after you release the key. So you get these three stages. Uh, I think that will work better actually with the piano to demonstrate that one. So let's go and select. Okay, so let's make sure they've taken hold. Uh, yes, they have. Good. Excellent. A, a piano would typically have you know an instant attack because it's like a hammer hitting the key. A electric piano is slightly softer though, isn't it? If you take the attack down, or should I say increase it, you end up with a 
that fade in that you'd have with strings. So you can change the character of the sound. The uh, decay, as I bring that down, you know, I'm holding the key, but the sound's disappeared. You can see what I mean if I hold it up. All right, whereas if I turn that up, there goes sustains, so that's the decay. Turn up the, turn up the release, and we've now got, let go, uh, lingers on. Okay, so completely change the characteristics of that sound now. It's more like an organ with sustain. All right, the modulation is quite fun. Our vibrato, that works on what's called a LFO, a low frequency oscillator. Change the rate and you'll end up with a, well, that needs a depth as well for it to work. There we go. Nothing like an electric piano now, is it? Nothing at all like an electric piano. Um, you also got a delay, so you can actually set it. I don't think I put a control on that. No, I didn't. I'll do that with the mouse. So I mean, you get a bit of note first and then, or not, come on. There we go. Holding the note and then it comes in. Switch on the portamento. That's actually glide between the notes. So you get this kind of. There we go. This is quite sickly, isn't it? You've got the bend range, incidentally, is for pitch bender on a keyboard. So if you've got a keyboard with a pitch bender down the left hand side, you can set the range of that. Also the modulation depth, you've got a second wheel or something down there for modulation, you can set the depth there with mod. Right, yeah, and so far I found the uh, tone controls wholly ineffective. Oh, there we are, a little bit, but, but it's not really doing anything useful. The difference between full mid and no mid is so minimal. Uh, but they're there to play with. It's up to you. So essentially, there we go. That's what those things do inside the TTS-1. Um, it's not as good as Logic, no, but this is free. So pretty good for free. Worth spending some time with it getting used to. It's fiddly, but it's all fun as well. So I'll do a bit more tutorial at some point soon on how to automate parameters within Cakewalk. But until then, thanks for listening. Catch up with you soon.